Creating new sites within the Empire. Before we get on to show you how to create a new site within the Empire, I just want to briefly take you through what type of site you can actually build out with the Network Empire's Domain Web Studio Suite. Typically, most people build primary money websites. Okay. Now, with DWS, you can create your primary website as a site with the thing. You can then create your secondary branded sites within DWS. You can then create another single keyword page campaign if you want to. You can manage your CPA offers. There's many things you can use DWS for. And the way we go about doing this is very simple. And when we get to our project global project settings, we get two tabs. It's our current sites and our add new sites tab. To add a new site, you click on the add new sites tab and you fill in the form. Now the form is broken down into the global site parameters, okay? And by defining these parameters, we give um, our entire project a baseline. So depending on what you want to do, you'll have multiple different variables and baselines that you need to achieve to understand and see if it's worth you while actually working on the project. So typically what happens is we've got the form over here with all these settings and what we do is we go through each setting and we fill in the data required and when we press create site that sets up the whole project for DWS. Now what I'm going to do briefly is I'm going to talk you through these global settings. So the first thing is what keyword defines your market and this is the site theme keyword. This is the primary keyword that your site is all about. Uh, this is what you're targeting and what you want to market. So for example, in our example here, we're doing permaculture courses. So under primary target keyword, we will fill in permaculture courses over there. The next section of the site form is site profile and domain. So if we've got a domain name, we'll fill it in over here. So what we'd fill in is the site domain. If we've got a blog, we'll fill in that URL as well. Then at the project name, we'll give it a, whatever we want to call it. What's the t purpose of the site? And then also, what type of web ring are we actually creating? Now, typically, most people being doing the WR1s first, so just leave it on as default. If you see little hover overs like uh, the question mark over there or over there or a little video strip, you can actually hover over it or click on it and it will show you a video. The next thing we define is what currency are we working in and what search engine. So we're saying Google and US dollars. Then we're going to define the silo architecture settings. Now this is how we break and segment the, the keyword market. Now by default, DWS comes when you create a new project, it gives you your default settings. And these settings are fine to start off with. But um, you can change them at any point in time from the keyword decision screen. So if you're not sure about this, leave it on the default. And in future videos, we're about to show you how to actually segment the stuff. But if you're new to silo architecture, typically what we're doing is we are segmenting the data structure, the data pyramid, into three categories. We're saying silos, categories, and supporting articles. Now, if permaculture is the silo and it's a top-level keyword that we're targeting, Within permaculture, it can break out into multiple different types of keywords, like permaculture design, for example. Now, permaculture design is the keyword we are actually going to be targeting as one of our keywords, and that's a category within permaculture. Then we've got permaculture design course online DVD. That could be a long tail keyword that we're targeting that falls underneath the permaculture uh, data hierarchy. So as you can see here, with the form in DWS, all we're saying is any keyword that is greater than a million is a silo. Any keyword that is less than a million and greater than 350,000 competing pages phrase match qualifies as a category, and anything smaller than 350,000 pages qualifies as a supporting article. To simply understand it, all you want to do is think of a, a dotted structure as a pyramid, and we're cutting it into three sections. All your long tails with low competing pages will be down at the bottom, all the categories that define specific niches or markets, uh, themes, sorry, niches and themes will fall as categories and typically your top level words. These are typically your single or two letter words, um, two words, uh, phrases are what are classed as silos. So after we fill that in, the next thing we do is what is the content development cost? So the backlink unit cost typically comes for promotion. What's it going to cost us to write an article to get 
one or two backlinks dropped into them that's going to link back to our primary content. And then our content cost per article, what it costs us to write our primary content within our site. So when you look at back, backlink unit cost, think of promotion. When you look at content cost per article, think of your primary site, the site that you're actually working on. Your sales funnel conversion settings. Now this is where we actually work out what keywords are worth. Okay, So typically it's broken down into Google traffic, then our website conversion, if we're doing affiliate sales or backup for sales, what the conversion rates are there, what's our site opt-in conversion rate, and what's the average profit we make per sale for this website. So over here in the image you can see that we're saying is that 25% of the people that go to that page, when we rank in positions 1, 2, or 3, will click on our website. We typically say be conservative when you're doing this. The next thing we look at is the website conversion. If you've got your actual website conversion or your average web conversion, fill that number in. But if you don't, keep it at 1 or even make it 0 0.5. Just to be conservative so that you can actually look, look at things from a practical point of view. You can always come back to your project once you prove that you've got a better and higher conversion rate. If you're not doing any back office or affiliate sales, leave the default setting at 100. Else, think or ask the question, out of 10 sales, how many sales actually convert? when the guys get the leads in and whatever number they give you five six seven just fill in fifty sixty or seventy percent over there and it will calculate the costs the average profit is the profit that you make we want to see how much profit we make we don't look at the turnover or the gross we look at the profit okay so that's what you fill in over there and last but least is the traffic and sales calculator this finds out how much traffic you need and how many conversions you need to achieve your financial goal when you go into a project and you've got a strong idea of what you want to earn, then what you do is you basically fill in what your financial goal is. So let's say we're going to make $5,000 a month off this website. By filling in the form and, and adding this information in, it will actually calculate out how much traffic you need, how many people it's going to take to make one sale, and if you're doing affiliate sales, how much other traffic you need. And it gives you a strong idea upfront what you need to do on a monthly basis to achieve that financial goal. Right guys, so we've created our Empire Permaculture Courses. Now the first thing we want to do is create a new site. So we can either click Add New Site or if you've gone through the Create New Empire process, you'd already arrive on the Create New Nice Site screen after you've created the Permaculture Course or your project course. Now you can see we've got no sites within our, our Empire yet. So this will be our first site. Here's the form that is broken down into small sections that we discussed earlier in the video. And you can see it's not a big form and most of the information is pre-populated. Now what we're going to do here is under the primary target keyword, if we hover over any of the little question marks, this tells you exactly what you need to put in here. The primary targeted keyword is basically the keyword you're targeting. So we're targeting permaculture courses. That's the vertical that we want to look at. So remember I spoke about the vertical being a triangle. I basically want to enter this market directly at permaculture courses. I'm not interested in much higher up. Right, so we've got our domain. We found a domain permaculturecourses.com and this is the domain that we would use. Um, next we're going to look at permaculture courses. That's going to be the project name. This is a free text area. You can type in what you want. If you've got a blog, you can put it in. The purpose of the site is going to be a membership site where we're going to do an introduction to urban permaculture. Uh, with the, uh, the, 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 the thoughts being on water security, food security and energy security. We're looking at the US, that's what we're targeting and basically now we're in the silo setting stages and we're saying that any silo keyword it must be greater than a million competing pages. A category keyword must be anything between 350,000 Competing pages phrase match and a million pages. Okay, and then our supporting keyword market size is anything smaller than 350,000 pages. This is the default setting in uh, DWS. So if you're not sure about it, just leave it as it is, and you'll be fine. Our backlink cost is typically for promotion. What does it cost us to write an article or create a video? Typically, basis of content and not videos. So um, our promotional articles are costing us $25 for the promotions and for the premium content that's going to be on our website that is facing the public we're getting charged $35 per article. So just to reiterate content cost per article is your primary site's content that's the content that goes on your website 
backlink unit cost is the articles you're going to write where you're creating backlinks. The site conversion rules essentially are basically what does it take to convert a keyword into money. Okay, so if we look at this, all we're saying is that 25% of the people will click on our listing within the search engine if we are ranked in position 1, 2, or 3. When they leave Google's search engine page and they arrive at our page and they read our content or our offer, depending where they've landed, typically we got a 1% conversion rate. If you have got hard stats in analytics that say, okay, my site gives me 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50% conversion, then fill those numbers in. If it's a new site and you have no conversions, if it looks like a tough market, take it down to 0.5%. So you go 0 0.05, that's how you'll type it out. If it's okay, any page rank is under 4, just send it to 1. Okay, affiliate vendors, website conversion or sales follow-up conversion typically means if you're generating leads, and I've done a course on local leads empire where you create leads for businesses and you get paid per lead, then what you've got to do is you've got to ask the people that are either doing the sales in the back office what is the average conversion rate? So out of 10 sales, how many will actually convert into a transaction? And they might say to you, two, three, four, five, whatever the number, they might even say every single lead we get, we convert. Whatever that number is, just add a zero to it, and that'll be your conversion rate. What this does is, um, it's, it scales down and increases the amount of traffic that you actually need because there's an extra step in the sales funnel. And the same applies to affiliate marketing. If we are doing affiliate sales and the traffic that we're sending to affiliate vendors webpage, if their webpage has only got like a 2 or 20% conversion rate or super, super low, you will see that you'll need to send a lot more traffic than you would have expected. So this helps you figure out, is this offer worth me investing into? And does the traffic that I can generate suffice to actually help me make any money out of this whole project? Right. Uh, the site option conversions, these basically is for building lists. And this, this gets shown up, I'll show you later on on the keyword decision screen where you can actually look at how much conversions that potential keyword can make for building lists for emailing. Okay, Typically we just say 10%, but um, that's what we leave it. Now, important thing here is fill in the average profit you make per sale from the website. We're basically selling this for $47. Okay. Um, Actually, sorry, our profit we want to make is $47 on this product, this video course. And we're probably going to sell it for $97. So I'm going to fill in $47. Now, we set a budget here for $50,000. Uh, this basically helps filter keywords. If keywords are too expensive in your keyword grid, they'll be hidden away. And, and only if you click the show all keywords, then you'll see it. The total financial goal monthly is 5000 is what we're after. That means we've got to make 106 sales a month which means every 100 people that hit our website will create one cell. And that gives us an idea that we have to basically drive 10,600 people to our website. If we're doing affiliate back office sales and we only got like a 30% conversion, you can see that our traffic has tripled in comparison to do, doing direct sales off the website. So you can see how this calculator is super powerful and helps you a lot. All you got to do now is create click the button create site profile and this sets the basic rules for your whole website now as we're looking over here we have all the we're on the keyword decision screen so I'm going to hop back to the empires and I'll show you where your site's going to sit now there's permaculture courses and there's our first site within the permaculture courses empire and you can see we can access any of the data from this point moving forward. In the next video, we're going to import keywords and we're going to look at it from the keyword DNA screen and we're going to start working our way through the process. I'll see you guys shortly.